Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome from Berlin, Germany to another Ladies Beyond Flying Aviation Women Panel. It's the 39th, by the way, since we started our journey in July 2020. My name is Daniel Stecher, IBS Software. And today we have a colleague from IBS Software as our guest speaker. It's my colleague Cecilia Parola, who is talking more about airline passenger loyalty. Cecilia, stage is yours. And to the audience, please raise your hand with the Teams feature, and then I will call you in and you can ask your questions verbally. Of course, you can engage with each other via the chat functionality. The platform is for you. Ladies, enjoy. Hi, everyone, and thank you again, Daniel, to invited me today to talk, as, as I was saying to you before, one of my favorite topics in the world, which is loyalty. And I love loyalty that much because it's something that we can all relate to. I mean, no, from the professional point of view, no matter where we work, loyalty for sure impacts our business. And on a personal life, I, I was reading the latest stats that on average, we are part of 16.6 loyalty programs, and which is a huge number, a crazy number. And for me that I'm working in this field, this number goes up to 35. So <laughs> that's the magic of, uh, uh, of this particular marketing strategy and business strategy. I think that loyalty in the airline industry is something special because frequent flying programs are some kind of DOGs. No, they set the bars for many other industries. Uh, that's why it was particularly interesting for me to talk about what's happening in, uh, in loyalty in the airline industry and trying to understand together how um, these changes and this transformation are impacting our business and what we could expect from, from the future. So I've prepared a couple of slides. Um, let me share my screen, just some food for thoughts to start this conversation. So can you see my screen? I Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. So as I said, loyalty in the airline space set the bars. So one of, probably one of the questions is, so if this is a uh, so well run um, business, why we are talking today, we need to redefine the loyalty for airline passengers. And for me, the, the answer is, is really easy because the way I love to define loyalty is that loyalty is this interface between the brand and the customers is the level, the layer where all the valuable conversation happens. So when the customers start to uh, say different things or new things, it's our job to transform the program, to adapt the program in, in a way that also the response that we give to our customers change. So uh, that's why I try to um, put together some food for thoughts to reflect on this transformation through a small vocabulary that hopefully help us navigate in what's happening right now. So I put together five plus one, which would be bonus words that help us define uh, what we are saying basically when we talk about loyalty in the airline space today. So a little Okay, a little bit about me. I'm Cecilia. Um, I'm head of product marketing for IBS software loyalty platform, which is iLoyal, specifically designed for airlines. A lot of the uh, the insight and the input that I put in this presentation come from, uh, let's say, real life conversation that I had the chance to have with our customers. So hopefully we will find this relatable. Um, I'm fairly new to the airline space, uh, less than a year. Uh, I have a background in digital marketing, then I have a solid eight years, eight, nine years experience in loyalty, and I had the chance to experience loyalty across different industries, retail, telco, hospitality, mobility, now uh, aviation. And one of the things I love the most about loyalty, as I was saying before, is also the fact that there is no secret recipe to do loyalty in the right way. It's all very, very, very dynamic. And this makes loyalty the perfect platform to innovate nowadays, specifically from my point of view, of course, which is a technological point of view. So I try to also add some inputs on this, uh, um, on this sense in this chat. 
So let's start our journey. The first of the five words that I picked up is change. A lot of things are changing in the industry and there are a lot of different factors at play. I try to collect which are for me the most interesting and I will start from the one that I think is the reason why a lot of programs out there are changing, which is a significant shift from B2B to B2C travels. Of course, we are talking about changes that are still a ripple effect from the pandemic as a result of the pandemic. As we all know and we all experience, business travel have decreased. And the, this is the reason why that while the main focus of the traditional models of uh, loyalty programs, so the free, so-called frequent flyer programs, were on B2B customers, when B2B travels decrease, there is, let's say, an untapped potential out there to focus more on individual travels, to focus more on B2C. But this opened us to a lot of different, um, a lot of different thoughts. One is that B2C travels may not travel as much as B2B. So that means that the tool and the dynamics and the strategy that we have in place in our traditional model may not fit to this critical mass that it's out there and that represents for us a huge opportunity. But also it means that within the B2C, it's a big world and big family, we have a wide range of different segments. We had a wide range of different demographic, different preferences, different travels behavior also, that we need to understand in order to engage with them in the right way. Uh, one of the other things that are changing relating to that is the new demographics. So with the, with the increasing of the focus on the individual travelers, we are interacting now with um, new generations that have um, interests and needs that are different from what probably we are used to. To, to just mention two of the main characters of our customer base, I think right now, um, we have the Gen Z and the millennials that are very tech savvy and really um, are driven by seamless digital experiences, integration of the experiences and so on. So if it's true that um, conveniences is still something that drive our purchase, I think that what we are witnessing right now, which is very interesting, is that the sense and the meaning of convenience is becoming more wider. So I, as a millennial, when I'm approaching a booking or when I'm approaching a travel, I can be dreaming as well as a um, fair price for a ticket, but also by the fact that it just took me three clicks to book a flight or just I, I know that with that airline, I have an exceptional customer service in case I have um, uh, any kind of issue or any kind of query. So with the new demographic, we have also new customer expectation. And in order to meet this customer expectation, what we are seeing is that loyalty programs out there, those ones that already started the transformation journey are, uh, let's say, plugging in a lot of different technologies, a lot of different innovation, and we are going to, to talk about also that to, in order to meet these, um, these changing customer needs. And this is basically what we do in IBS. In IBS, we um, accompany customers in this transformation journey, and we enable them with the business agility that is required for them to meet these uh, these uh, evolving customer needs. I have a question already because you yes. were introducing yourself and you were saying you were uh, working in the rice industries in the field of loyalty. So yes. some people say that the airline or aviation industry is pretty much trained behind certain trends where other industries are maybe trendsetters. So this change you were mentioning and all these yes. four factors is there an industry where you experienced already this a couple of years back? Or are there uh, similarities to other industries and mm -hmm. airline and aviation industry is in the same uh, ocean like all the other industries? Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting question. Well, from my point of view, I think that a lot of the response of these changes really deeply relied with technological capabilities, meaning that one of the 
keywords, one of the things that we all want to achieve is personalization. Personalization of the customer experience, personalization of delivery is not a new thing. I mean, we are talking about personalization. We are talking on personalization from 10 years. And I think that those industries that are uh, born as digital industries, online retail, for example, are a little bit more advanced in creating this kind of, um, uh, in achieving this kind of goal and in delivering more, even more and more personalized experience because they have the advantage of not, uh, of being built, let's say, of having technology underneath that allow them by design to, to do all these things that uh, we need to do in order to deliver to a certain customer a certain experience. I think that for traditional industries, uh, especially in the travel world, um, all these challenges are ultimately relatable to a technological challenge. And I recall one of our customers in IBS, we were talking about uh, the reason why they then decided to implement our solution and so on. And they were saying, we had in mind the mission from a long time to be as close as possible to our customer, to deliver an exceptional experience. But even the simple accrual of points will take us months. And it was a painful, basic operations. So this give you, I think, a little bit the extent of all the works that we need to do in this industry to, to, to work on our technology and to enable them um, a lot of the new things that we want to do and we need to do in order to, to seize the opportunities that are out there in the market. That's probably the reason why some airlines call themselves the Amazons of the skies or something similar. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is it. This is interesting. I mean, uh, uh, there are a lot of in other industries also in terms of personalization. If you think, for me, personalization is what Netflix does. No, so no specifically what kind of cover of movie or TV shows needs to show you based on the data that I have on you and based on the data that I have on other segments that looks like you. So it, it's incredible computing power, incredible uh, amount of data. Uh, we are getting there. Uh, and I think that more than personalization, it's important for us to think about relevancy, which is like the P first piece of the puzzle to to then reach the the the, the personalization land, let's say. <laughs> Erin, you made a uh, comprehensive comment in the chat. Do you want to verbally explain a little bit and uh, appear on stage with your comment? Oh, it's it's not super important. Just my background is UX, and I'm sure. Uh, Cecilia, this was not really your point, but I just love to always make sure nobody thinks three clicks is a goal that we should ever try to achieve. It's value to steps. Um, lots of research, if you go Google it, on that each step matters versus how many steps. And people will actually say a longer process is faster if the steps are clear. So it's usually when people make mistakes or get frustrated that's when they're like, oh, it needs to be short. No, it needs to be clear. That was all. It's just my, pe it's one of my uh, public service <laughs> announcements that I always love to make. <laughs> but I, but I, mean, I have, I I have to confess, I made today two clicks and I bought two books at Amazon. So it's possible, it, possible with just one click to buy something. So maybe <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> no, a hundred percent. It's, it's possible. The, the question is the value. I yes. literally get you know, people coming in, it needs to be X number of clicks. And that's never the the measure you should use. It should be a very efficient process. If you can get it down to one or two, fabulous, all the power to you. But don't shorten it arbitrarily as a goal or a measure. That's the client conversation that I often have with airlines is that make sure you're efficient, but valuable. Confusing people because you try to cram things in, things like that happens. Um, this is not the point of your presentation, so it wasn't meant as a distraction. <laughs> so sorry about that. No, 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 but it's an, an amazing point. Thank you. No, thank you for bringing this up. As, uh, as Daniel would say, I mean, my, my three click is because I'm used to fast consuming <laughs> my, my bookings on my purchase. Uh, but I completely agree with you and it's completely relatable to, to, to the topic of this conversation because it's all the focus now is what is what I perceive value, no? Uh, yes. what's my value compared to your value? And this is the challenge that we are facing right now, indeed. Yeah, great. Sorry if I took away your momentum there. <laughs> no, no, please, everybody who has a comment, 
um, or question, don't be shy. We are not biting. <laughs> I think you can go on to see. Okay. So this was the first word, change, which led me quite um, immediately to the second word that I pick up, picked up, which is evolution. So what we are seeing that is happen upon these changes that are happening in the market. I think that the most interesting evolution is trying to overcome or trying to go beyond what is the traditional frequent flyer and programs that represents the stable, the, the evergreen of loyalty programs across the industry, as I mentioned, to something, some models that is more contemporary and more able probably to seize all the opportunities that we have in the market. And I'm sure that we at least once um, already listening to some conversation that that brand on that loyalty program is becoming a lifestyle brand or a lifestyle uh, model. Um, I try to uh, wrap up what it means, a lifestyle loyalty models, to try to um, underline the differences and the evolution that we are seeing today in all the transformation that are happening in the in the loyalty space in the in the airline uh, space uh, the first one is that the um, lifestyle programs have as the main objective those one of delivering an experience that uh, not only um, focus on um, booking flights or travel related transaction but there is a commitment there is an effort or um, creating an an, uh, an environment and creating an ecosystem that can accompany and be valuable for the customers in every aspect of their life and within the the everyday engagement concept i think that the real superpower here is thinking about partnership so we are seeing even more and more the the that airlines are plugging in non-aviation partners so we are going a little bit further the 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 alliances and we are trying to plug in different kind of segments different kind of industries that all can contribute to create value for the customers um, having the customers as a whole and not just consider and not just having a narrow focus on the on their travel transactions it means that we can as a brand be close to the customer in every step of their life not just in the journey with us as a service provider or as a product provider but also untapped and other interesting things that will be kind of the under theme along all these conversations. So it untapped the value of data, basically. Because if you think that if I make a step forward in not just having that program and not just having uh, that model, but into creating an ecosystem where a lot of different parties interact, not only on my internet, but also external parties, two partners, for example, I'm creating a lot of new opportunities for customers to interact with my program. Through this interaction, through this new interaction, I can um, along the way know even more about my, my, my customer preferences and my customer behavior. And I can use this information to eventually and finally target personalized experience, personalized offer, and always improve my program and my approach with my customer a little bit and my um, uh, experience with them a little bit. So this would be really game changing. Of course, we know that that data is the playground where the, the real battle is. Uh, but also lifestyle loyalty models means to have a wider array of options to, to, to customers in the way they can use uh they can earn and burn their uh, their points meaning that we are going to have more and more opportunity for customer interactions uh and ultimately we are putting the first piece of the puzzle i will say before to create a personalized experience it's like and this is at least how i like to see this topic it's like that the customers is finally co-participating with the brand into creating their loyalty experience. It's not just on the only terms of the airlines, it's also on my terms on taking into account my needs and taking into account um, uh, what I will really value in this, um, in this relationship. 
talking about, of course, personalized experience, I could not uh, exceed myself to to not focus and not pick up as a third world experience. Uh, we, has, we have mentioned before an holistic customer view, the customers at the very forefront, the experience as, as one of our main focus. But what does really mean personalization? We, we, um, it's really a, a, a very controversial term, in my opinion. It's something that is very much overused. It's something that everyone wants to achieve. Um, for me, personalization means a lot of things. Uh, personalization grows through uh, the value of your loyalty program. So the way, what are you offering with your customers? And if this was valuable 10 years ago, now it's absolutely uh, um, gold truth. One size does not fit all. The more diverse, the more correct, as we were saying uh, before about the user experience, no? it's not just having a wide range of offers, in not just having a wide range of rewards, in not just saying, hey, customer, do what you want, but it's showing that there is a commitment from the brand to create a proposition that is based on certain criteria that are mirroring what at least we think the customer needs and wants and which are their behavior and so on. Same thing for the user experience and the user journey and same things about communication. I'm part of that school, that philosophy that really does not see any um, difference between who works in loyalty, who works in CRM, um, uh, in, uh, in other industry, just to, to have a bit of another industry. I've seen that together with the loyalty program, it's the business design that is transforming a lot of uh, industries. And again, just to mention on, on dry retail, it's an industry in which I have a lot of experience. Uh, there is not anymore the loyalty business unit or the uh, the CRM business unit. Everything is merged together because everything needs to um, have sense together. Everything needs to be integrated together because ultimately the um, the the goals that we are uh, we are trying to reach are the same. Um, another bit of personalization that I think is very important because so far I've talked a lot about the untapped opportunity, you know, the, the individual travels, the B2C, new demographic, not so frequent travels. But we have still have frequent travels. We still have our strong core of valuable customers and shifting model and evolving our loyalty approach. It does not mean that we don't care anymore about this uh, about this uh, this segment but on the contrary it means that if our mission is to is to deliver through the loyalty program exceptional things and exceptional experience to all our customers for our high value customers we need to be even more we need to provide them with exclusive really money can buy experience and that this is another effect of uh, of pandemic, I think, because what we have seen is that, and this is not only not only in, uh, in aviation, but overall also in in hospitality, in other travel um, uh, travel segment. Um, with the pandemic, there were the need to extend here, extend the expiration of points, and so on. And this has crea um, created uh, some sort of mismatch between. Uh, the, the the tier of, of the customer and the behavior that the customer show that is not matching anymore. And these are, there are a lot of, of news and the one main names or example, but these have created a lot of different uh, frustration because the customer has seen brands that more and more are kind of lowering down a little bit the offering and the, the, the value delivered to the elite tiers. Uh, so that's why on the other side, we are seeing a lot of rising of new programs and new value proposition, um, invitation only, secret loyalty programs just for exclusive VIP tiers. And these are very important tools because one of the, at least I believe, one of the pillar on which the loyalty game is played really is recognition. So I 
me as a as a customer i want to be recognized i want to, that my needs are recognized that my information are recognized and so on but as a loyal customer specifically i want that something that no one else have because i want in some way a commitment for the brand that is showing me that they're valuing my uh, my loyalty and my my purchase decision so that's a very interesting thing that is happening and uh, uh, again all of these different aspects are really 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 uh, related to the capabilities that our technology allow us today to to do within our loyalty programs this is an interesting um, topic, exclusive experiences. Yeah. Um, um, I just recently experienced with an airline where I have the second highest tier and I was earlier the highest tier that I was affected from an um, EU 261 relevant delay. And of course, I uh, put a claim and I expected that, okay, they check, ah, this is a very loyal customer. And of course, it was a delay. It was our fault. Even the pilot was talking about it at the gate. But in fact, they were denying it. Yeah. Uh, so is, is there any statistics um, how better loyal passengers are treated from airlines uh, on this EU 261 uh, passenger compensation scheme? Do, mm -hmm. we, do we have something like this? Because this would be also for me something, okay, you have some mileage you can use for hotel travel uh, shopping and so on but how are you treated if something is not going well of course you get maybe a rebooking but this passenger compensation topic i believe where it also is financially relevant is uh, mm -hmm. something else well i don't have statistics by hand but i agree with you that the whole topic of passenger compensation and in general travel vouchers or what happened in case of major disruption is um, uh, it's worth it a different conversation a more deep dive conversation loyalty in here i think plays a very important role as you say uh, my expectation was that i was recognized for my tier and and this is again i i think and i and i and i bet uh, mostly a technological problem because I think that even the most advanced business works a little bit in silos, no? Still. So um, what's the potential of your loyalty ecosystem? What's the potential of your loyalty platform? If not being your single source of truth, because probably you have other systems that does that, loyalty is still in the middle of your value chain. So loyalty have this power of having all this information from a different part create a value around this information and then feed this information across all your touch point in order that when it comes to managing a complaint or and so on i always have all the information that i need that qualify that customer from all the interaction that the customer have with the, with me regarding to travel compensation it's um it's very interesting because for example we in abs have uh, I think done something as simple as innovative possible. So um, uh, we have a solution that specifically target travel vouchers in, in case of um, in, in case of disruptions, but not as managed separately as it happens traditionally, but completely integrated in the value pool of the loyalty program. So um, when you experience a delay or where you, um, uh, when you need also to change your travel plans and so on, uh, my potential as a brand is to let you stay within your loyalty ecosystem, let you interact with me through loyalty, so through a single point of contacts and give you a form of entitlement that you can use across all the offerings that I'm tailoring for you as for what we have said so far. So, so I'm signing in for another conversation about this topic. On the and other hand, of course, we are always we are always mentioning if something is going not so well on the other hand and we have somebody from this loyalty program here in the call and i'm a very proud elite plus member of this loyalty program and i experienced when there was a delay of course it's difficult to have a delay that then i could see additional miles on my mileage program so we have also positive examples in the industry in the but uh, yes. yeah it might be that maybe the one airline is outsourcing it's 
uh, loyalty program and then it's more bureaucrat bureaucratic to somehow transfer from the airline to the mileage program, I'm just guessing. But there are also good examples in the industry that loyal customers are getting a good treatment. Ah, no, absolutely. But I mean, when I, I was um, when I started working in hospitality in you know, my previous experience, the first thing that my my CEO said to me that loyalty and we can debate about this, but uh, loyalty is shown in case of disruption. So you don't need to measure loyalty based on how many customers are happy, but you need to measure loyalty based on what happened if a customer isn't happy. How do you respond? To, to this customer. So it's a, an interesting reflection that I put out there. <laughs> and of course, this is another topic. Um, if you have a travel policy where you fly economy only, and <laughs> still you have a very high uh, elite tier level, and then you are affected from a disruption, what is then the experience? And I made once an experience where, of course, the focus is on the business class passengers. And maybe there is one who flies for the very first time and I was flying 100 times a year with this airline, how you are then treated. So this is another nuance in our industry where I see a lot of potential for improvement. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree. And uh, and I think that on the other way, on the way around. So if I'm not an elite tier, uh, but I want to live the experience of an elite tier, there are a lot of different options right now with uh, with the increasing interest through subscription programs and all these new product uh, that I think are very 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 interesting and are working on 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 uh, on the right way. Good. Okay, so let's go into the fourth word that it's kind of uh, logic now to talk about. We have talked a lot about technology, but let's talk a little bit about innovation. So which are the things that are the, 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 the new uh, technological magic no, that are happening, that are uh, significantly impacting the world of loyalty, but in general, also our job in the, in the, within the airline industry. There are a lot of new things or not new, so new things that have significant application in uh, in uh, in this conversation. I picked one that I think is the most relatable because I guess that at least once everybody, every one of us have played with ChatGPT and which is artificial intelligence. I am a huge fan of the implication of artificial intelligence because it's something that have impact on the way we do our job, the way we do tomorrow our job, and the way we are interacting with uh, with our customers. Of course, again, uh, these are just some food for thoughts. Also on this topic, we could dedicate two, three, four, five different talks because uh, it's so it's so wide, it's so interesting. But I try to to wrap up at least the most significant impact that I think artificial intelligence uh, is having on uh, on loyalty. One is, of course, data. Uh, and it's not that much the fact that through machine learning based, through AI based models, I can uh, analyze uh, more seamlessly a huge amount of data and so on, but also because of all the predictive capabilities that AI put on the table. So the, the way I imagine my, my, my future in, uh, but not my future in 10 years, my future in, in two months is sitting on a computer in front of my computer and say, hey, based on this information on this target, what I should do? I mean, what's my next best action? that I can do to engage more with this customer, to make this customer purchase more and so on. And this, I think, is completely game changing and is one of the capabilities that we are actually improving in uh, in IBS. Um, one of, the, yes, data, it's a very big uh, portion of, uh, of uh, conversation. I think one specifically related to loyalty, that is more element, probably more down to earth, more concrete that we can almost touch is all the, the magic that uh, ie power technology can do on fraud detection. So again, it's always a matter of collecting data, understanding data, understanding uh, and identifying um, pattern of behavior in order to prevent fraud, in order to 
um, uh, give an alert to, um, uh, to, for example, to customer agent whenever the intelligent thinks that there is a, a, um, a fraudulent action that can take place. This, of course, huge impact not only on operational efficiency, uh, which is the next point, but also, of course, of uh, uh, it will help us to prevent a lot of money. Uh, another point, as I mentioned, is operational efficiency. Uh, the, the beauty of AI is that it can help us streamline a lot of processes. And I think one of the easy examples, easy that's most relatable example is all the improvements from an operational point of view that AI can uh, put on uh, customer service through uh, automatic replies that are specifically targeted and uh, tailored on each customer based on information that, that we have and so on. And ultimately, it can help us to innovate the way that we interact or with our customers. One of the early examples of machine learning, I think, is a chatbot. And we have seen a lot as, as customers and users, and we have seen a lot. But what I expect to see as a passenger no, is not just to you know, have a chatbot there uh, that helped me with frequent ask questions, that helped me to probably navigate through a query and so on or a complaint, but I expect to go on an airline website or opening the, my airline mobile app and having a travel assistant that can help me not just respond to a query, not just resolving an issue or not just booking a, a ticket, but help me organize a 360 degree, my old travel experience. That would be, at least for me, uh, something incredibly amazing that I'm, and I'm looking forward to, to experience uh, very soon. And uh, this is something that innovation in general is something that is uh, is a topic that I, it's very close to me. It's very close to IBS. It's in, within our uh, core value. We have indeed a um, uh, community-based development moment, which means that uh, our our portfolio customer highly influence our roadmap. And uh, we have a platform that is called Loyalty Forum, which we provide um, a stage for our customers to interact, to really discuss what's next. No? So what are the next things that we want to achieve and which are the technologies that we need and the capabilities that we need uh, to, um, uh, to achieve these goals. There's uh, a question and, from Alex. Alex, you want to raise yes. a question verbally? Uh, yeah, sure, of course. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much for this presentation. Yeah, I do have a question. I came across this post on LinkedIn earlier today, and uh, someone posted about, you know, his horrible experience. He is a loyalty member on Lufthansa and with Lufthansa, and then he booked a, um, a ticket with Miles and flew on Swiss and booked something through Swiss. So at the end of the day, he had a bad experience he wanted to share his feedback but he basically ended up with both sides saying um it's not our problem and it's airline group right so my question to you based on your experience like do you see airlines invest enough into this because in my understanding like europe is is three big groups right so it yes. must be a big issue for those three big groups Well, it's a complicated, um, it's a complicated thing, I think, uh, because yes, I mean, the, the airlines landscape, especially in Europe, is dominated by groups nowadays. And um, <laughs> I think that it's still a little bit early to, to predict uh, how this will going to evolve. Uh, but I think that the issue with, I see that there is an issue with customer experience in general, especially in time of uh, something that happened and I need uh, and I need assistance. And this is again, as I, as I was mentioning before, mostly um, um, a matter of technology, a matter of system, a matter of silos, a matter of disintermediation, a matter of intermediation. Um, I don't know, Daniel, what do you think about that? Because yeah, you, I think you are um, the... yeah, yeah. It, I think this is um, it, it's also true for airline operations. Mm -hmm. So not just for loyalty, and mm -hmm. uh, there are 
from my understanding, more initiatives in in, in terms of commercial harmonization. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this typical, typical marketing agreement and, and code share and all that stuff. But when something goes wrong, the passenger is always in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. Nobody is really responsible and so on. And it can be even become worse because more and more airlines deploy ACMI operators. So it's not even member of the alliance, it's a third party partner. Um, and um, and this uh, United Breaks Guitar, that is an, a perfect example from a baggage handler, uh, which was from Air Canada at the end, uh, United became the blame. And so this is uh, unfortunately um, the situation in the industry. If something goes wrong, everybody disappears and the passenger has to sort it out. And this is also a big topic in my field. Um, I think accountability um, uh, and also taking the responsibility is important. But that would be my question then to you, Cecilia. How much are passenger considering this? And Alex, to this person who flew with uh, Lufthansa, does it mean the person is now considering to fly next time with another airline group because they made a bad experience with Star Alliance, or are maybe airline managers realizing he is loyal, he is an our tier lead, why should he leave? He's losing a lot of points. It costs us more than this little thing and they will bear with us. I'm just speculating, but maybe that's the reason because the passenger is staying still in this alliance. Uh, not necessarily, Daniel. I think this day and age already behind, like when we stick to something that because only because of loyalty, I really see more and more people are switching airlines or becoming like free agents, you know, and uh, uh, my friend from uh, Status Match, Mark Ross Smith, right, is doing a great job with his business, basically matching airline loyalty status. So I really think that this issue is um, is not getting enough attention um, by the airlines, but actually they should be paying more attention because once the person has a bad experience uh, with the available options, he can switch pretty easily. Um, that's my take on it. I don't know, Cecilia, what you have yes. in mind. Yes, and I don't think there is um, one single number or one single start that that we can we can mention. I remember just one of the things that really shocked me almost, uh, not in, in, in this industry, but in a very close industry in the travel sector. I was working for a brand and and um, basically we we checked that the NPS of elite members were significantly low than the NPS from non elite uh, customers. And that's because probably if you are an elite member, you value the most, no? And and again, I was mentioning before the, the, the recognition pillar. If I'm not recognized, then am I an elite tier? If I make the effort of participating into this custom, this brand customer relationship, um, a disruption impacts me, especially a, a disruption within my interaction with customer service impact me mostly and infinity more than a regular customer. So I will search for some some statistic in this case. And you just made another comment. Would you like to raise your voice, please? <clears throat> yes. Hello. Hi. Uh, I, I actually had a couple of. Um, thank you so much for for doing this, Cecilia. Right, Cecilia. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, my Italian is not good. Never been. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to. The, the first question I had was uh, with the IBS loyalty platform. Uh, is that coupled with the PSS, or is that a product that you sort of offer independently? I mean, that's really good to know. Yes, um, uh, iLoyal, which is our loyalty products, is uh, independent, let's say, but okay. yet very transversal to the other products of our portfolio. Uh, and we can interoperate with any other systems in the airline scape. Oh, OK, right. So, I mean, if, uh, if I'm, for instance, hosted on Altea, then you mm. would need an SBR feed, of course, from Altea to interact with, with the system. Yeah, yeah. 
N plus N, yeah. just for information, there's iRetail, which is a retail platform from IBS yeah. software, which is then yeah. also connected to iLoy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that makes yes, perfect we, sense. Yeah. We are but, a big family. Of, and you, uh, you, you raised your point on a, a, a conference talk from an industry. Yes, yes. The other, I mean, I was at the Future Travel Summit in Barcelona recently, and uh, and I've actually heard the presentation twice. I'm not saying that I think that the presentation was that great because I thought it was a bit fluffy. Uh, uh, it was Lufthansa Innovation Hub out of Berlin who spoke on the topic that loyalty is dead. I mean, something that I personally don't agree with, but you know, there was a very sort of hyped presentation saying that Gen Z are, you know, they don't care. Loyalty is practically dead. You have to think differently. You know, um, actually, loyalty can go home and die. And, and uh, you know, interesting, I would love to. I disagree with that. Uh, I assume you do as well. Right. But uh, your, your thoughts on that? This is uh, this is interesting because it links also to a question that I, I was about to ask all of you. So if you would pick oh, one okay. word, if you would pick one word uh, to describe what loyalty will be tomorrow, what this word would be, and uh, I get the old sense of loyalty is dead. In a way, I'm agree, meaning that there are a lot of different models that are very traditional and are not yeah. resonating that much. Uh, for example, yes. with me, because I'm a millennial, so um, I, I'm not that used to that um, uh, scheme, let's say, on the dynamics. But what I would love to, to see as a loyalty professional is loyalty that is not just seen as an output is not just seen mm. as a product, as a separated it. brain, I love as it. something that is integrated, yes. that is integrated and, and speaks yeah. within a lot of different efforts that also the brand, that, 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 that every business is putting on the table to, to strengthen the relationship with the customer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yes, I mean, this is uh, what I would love to see. And this is a little bit part of the effort that we are putting on the table through technology to enable then uh, this sort of evolution that we were talking about before. That is super interesting that you should say that because that is so close to my heart uh -huh. is that it has to be an engagement, right? I mean, I love the initiatives of, you know, let's take a Do Good Points or a Skyfinity, you know, where all of a sudden the customer becomes engaged in something. And to me, that is priceless um, and, and, and brings so much loyalty. Uh, and, you know, I get so tired when I see there was an article by Norwegian Airlines, I think, the other day. And they said, oh, people talk about carbon offset, but only one percent of our customers will do that and buy it. Well, I personally believe that the reason why only one percent will buy into that is because they are not transparent and articulating in, you know, clearly what they are doing and what are the efforts and what's this going towards. So it's it's it needs to be some sort of win win. And I will stop monopolizing and take up your time. But thank you so much. I <laughs> no, but this is I mean, this opened for me another one of my favorite topic, which, oh, which is sustainability, because both yeah. as a professional and as a as a person who care a lot about yeah. this topic and say, okay, there is a risk on doing greenwashing, it's very controversial, let's not talk about sustainability. But I mean always stop travel and so the old industry is dead <laughs> which is yes. not something that we can foresee or as you said we start talking we start talking yeah. with with all we have and with uh, with transparency and based on the value that are specific to each kind of brand um, we cannot avoid the conversation yeah. anymore I think. Yeah. And, and loyalty is becoming a really interest playground to start to to have this kind of conversation there are a lot of uh, airlines that have for example there's Qantas that one of our customers that's the green tier and they are mm -hmm. trying to to tell a story through a specific loyalty that loyalty dynamic and this I think one of the way we should use more loyalty to have this kind of conversation I do agree so too yeah thank you so much oh yeah thank you for your question
And uh, yes, just to conclude, we have uh, reached our fourth word, uh, which is opportunity. Uh, I mean, uh, with a lot of changes comes a lot of opportunities. So uh, I, there's, uh, there's a lot out there to take. I think the most uh, straightforward things, I try to, to, to wrap up the most straightforward thing. So, so which are for me the main benefits of embracing this transformation and try to, to push forward the evolution of loyalty. Of course, um, increasing the ancillary revenue streams by providing to the customer more flexibility, more um, a wide range of possibility for their uh, their their spending. Um, having, which is the, my favorite one, is the second one. Having the customer at the center of everything, uh, committing to focus on delivering to them personalized experience, getting to know them more and more, set the pace for a long-term relationship and not just on that specific transaction. That's why I'm very excited about this, um, this, uh, this, this, this shift that is changing that we are seeing, because really we are starting to talk about customer lifetime value and now a loyalty program can help increasing and improving them. Uh, of course, evolving the model uh, means also opening up to new revenue streams. Partnership are a big, huge opportunity for that. And I would just want to mention another thing that was really, really interesting and really impactful. Uh, I was talking to one of our customers and they said, uh, we have not a loyalty program, we have a fintech. So this for me was very exciting to hear. And this gives you a little bit the extent on which are all the business opportunities that, because we talk about, you know, long-term, we talk about uh, customer loyalty, which is a long-term goal and so on, but we have really um, concrete business opportunity to, to happen here. And also we mentioned, for example, um, uh, new um, products that we can run um, together with our loyalty program, such as the subscription programs, which I think that, more tap into those not so frequent kind of uh, target that are willing to pay to have uh, an elite experience and um, in uh, especially in the in the let's say low cost carriers we are seeing a lot of these kind of models and uh, ultimately all these things yes are business opportunities but what helped us to do which it seems not that related to business but i think it's the very key of it all uh help us to be as attractive as possible as competitive as possible and as strong as possible into into our market and to win uh, a little bit more percentage of our market share which is ultimately what what the loyalty program should do uh, so i wanted to as i anticipated i had a, a bonus word uh, which is future so this is an open question that I want to ask all of you. So if you could describe the federal loyalty mod world, what this world would be. And I'm concluded. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm very talkative. So. <laughs> and again, this is a topic that excites me a lot. So this is an open question for all of you. I already partially responded to this. So we get here a trust, we get data, but maybe everybody who raises the word, please speak up. So Ashana, can you can you just explain why you mentioned data? Hey Daniel, greetings for the day. Hey Daniel, hey Cecilia. Yes. And great Good. to be part of this discussion. Actually, this is the first time I'm being part of the Ladies Being Flying and it's a wonderful experience. Myself, Ashna, I belong to the CDX team and my job role involves documentation and trainings for our loyalty application. So I believe that uh, um, since uh, our loyalty application maintains so much data, I believe from very short um, experience in the loyalty application, I believe that our application will be able to leverage and uh, help the LN loyalty uh, programs. Uh, with their future strategies, business strategies, and helping um, leveraging the power of data. So that's what Thank I you. believe the future of data is. And you mentioned trust. Do you want to elaborate on that? 
Sorry there. Yes, I'm muting. Uh, yeah, trust, of course, the engagement. Uh, I mean, that is that is to me the ultimate uh, relationship with um, any loyalty program. And um, it can be done really well. I mean, like like I often say, my um, uh, my my bank, I have a great relationship with my bank. Um, I I think they're just great. They've got a sensational app. They they deliver everything. They seem to know everything about me almost. Um, and I trust them. And and I think that's exactly what I was talking to talking about before is that there has to be a level of engagement uh, as well from the customer and and the airline. By the way, I think most airline loyalty programs are pretty crappy, but it's a very personal um, personal opinion, but I, I, I will you. say that they are. Can so I my, my word would be universal. And that universal. means that means because, for example, I have now 71,000 points which are going to expire by end of this year with my uh, very famous Starlines mileage program. And of course, if I live in this country, I could now shopping and blah, blah, blah. I live in Germany and suddenly the options are so much limited and so on. I could now get an Amazon gift voucher, whatever, and so on. So it would be great if a loyalty program can be really used everywhere because the ecosystem is so universal that I can use it in the supermarket, in the restaurant, with my uh, preferred hairdresser, even me, I need a hairdresser, and so on and so on. And that I'm not have to think about Okay, where I have to go in order to make use of my millions of points, it's the other way around. It's so many options that I don't have to think about how I make my personal experience. Well, wow, that's interesting. And that's very, uh, uh, say, very disruptive, <laughs> I would say also. <laughs> but... <laughs> But yes, I get, I get the, the, the wanting to have a seamless experience with that, uh, wanting to make the most of the value that that we are shown to a brand. And well, I think that we are we are putting a little bit of first step towards this direction, no? Uh, by by uh, incrementing more and more the presence of non-airline partners by focusing on everyday earning board. Um, this is already very different to what was happening uh, traditionally, you know, in the industry. There's another word. Bindu, do you want to present your word? Yes, yeah, sure, Daniel. Thank you. Okay, hi, all. Bindu here. Um, I feel basically the future of loyalty or basic now itself, it is something this whoever is a part of the loyalty program, they're looking for ways in which they are getting more rewards. Recognition is one of the aspect of reward which they are getting, okay. Every person who is part of the loyalty program, they wants to be recognized, okay, be it in monetary value or be it in getting rewards, be it just naming, calling them by their name, even that can make a difference in most of the people's lives, okay. So rewarding, in whatever way we can. I think, Daniel, you also mentioned like universal. It is basically the same thing, okay? So you are going to get the rewards. You are going to get the benefits of whatever actions you are performing. You are going to get the benefit of that in some other way, some one way or another one. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's interesting. And it's um, um, remind me of, uh, let's say we were, played no with this concept of using the words no usually i reward an action so i reward um a booking i reward a purchase uh i not that much used to think about rewarding the customers for being loyal to me and uh, in uh, I, and i i'm honest i don't know how much in uh, in the airline space but in other in other industries it's for example in banking it's used a lot the the concept of surprise and delight of having these initiatives and having these um, uh these offer delivered for apparently no reason and the power that these kind of initiatives that from a business perspective seems completely 
crazy, no? I just let's just give uh, a benefit to a customer for no reason. They are actually very very powerful too to create what we were uh, telling before. So to create a human experience for the customers with the brand. Uh, and I think this is something that we we should, as an industry, explore a lot. Cecilia, I would be interested uh, to get from you one case study or one use case in the industry, one role model where these words were somehow put in place and where with all the different facets, um, the loyalty program were suddenly getting a different traction, different perception also maybe from the outside world, uh, from, from the airline. Do, do you have something to share where you can say this airline and they did this and this and this, and maybe it was not recognized in the beginning, but meanwhile passengers realize it and it results in this and this and this tangible benefit. A specific use case in the airline world? Yes, that would be something. Or if you have, if you have it from another industry, please <laughs> share from another. No, as a let's say as a, a loyalty enthusiast, I I I need to to come out and say that I found more in, more. I mean, uh, that there's more evolution in other industry compared to 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 the aviation. I see a lot of um incredible models in the aviation space uh i already see a lot of uh, uh innovation um regarding the business impact that I, that these innovation are having uh yes we could put together some use cases also among our um portfolio customers uh but i think that this is the moment of uh, uh, changing every shuffle in the things. I think that we should wait a little bit to see the real impact of all these changes and all different uh, approaches also are, are having. So then, if you want some numbers, then there is my personal opinion that I have my, uh, let's say, loved brand in terms of loyalty, which uh, it's yes. very different. Ah, okay, okay. So uh, you you have more words, or can we conclude the session? Maybe you have more words. You said last word. Maybe no, the last, last, is there a last wish? Maybe a last wish. Yes, yes, yes. So what is your wish for the industry? Uh, continue innovation will be because uh, I mean that's uh, uh, that's what loyalty is for, no. Uh, and uh, I think that we have already seen a lot of things that I was telling before. Sometimes it's very, very different to very, very difficult to tell one program apart from another, you know, to really understand the differences between what a program is, that is giving me compared to another program in a similar industry. So have loyalty as a space for innovation because uh, I think it's uh, it's made for them, and I really believe and trust in the in the business potential of loyalty. And no, loyalty is not that; it's transforming itself a lot. So then, thank you very much for this very insightful thank you. Uh, conversation thank you. and presentation. I learned a lot. I think we had many uh, great questions, and yes. um, so let's see how the industry is evolving. Uh, looking already ahead. We have a fantastic um, last presentation of the year from Ludmila Slobodyanok from Skyup Airlines from Ukraine. Um, and I think this will be also a very amazing story. Uh, we all know what's going on in, in her country and um, how the airline uh, was changing a transformation um, from remote and so on. I think this will be very interesting to attend on the 12th of December. Everybody, please kindly do the needful um, if you want to book your seat. Yeah, and then if you have a question or recommendation, who shall be on stage in the upcoming um, year, please let me know and uh, we will uh, schedule your preferred speakers. Thank you again, uh, Cecilia, for this uh, very 
nice presentation. Oh, thank you. And uh, if we are not seeing each other before the end of the year, I wish everybody nice season greetings, Merry Christmas, and also a happy and especially peaceful and lucky new year. So nice to have you with us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.